Hi, and welcome to The Scoop. My next guest has been called the Eye of Kenyans for the provocative images he captured during the post-election violence of 2008. His ability to inject artistry into his work, together with his political activism, earned him many photojournalism awards around the world. The pictures that you shot in 2008 changed history in, in Kenya. There was a story that really made your name as well, globally. You were already a famous photographer in Kenya, yeah. but globally these pictures made your name. Tell me about going out and taking those pictures, going into the slums. When the violence started, I was, I was in Madare. We were waiting for the announcement of the elections, and when it was announced, there were many screams, and I don't know where the machetes came from, people being cut, and the police all over, and the burning houses. And I thought, okay, I shot. Went back to the newsroom and said, oh, yeah, these things happened. But they didn't take my photo seriously. I don't think they were published that night mm. or the next day. Then then kept on going for like two months. Mm. There were many white photographers coming with their mm. flak jackets, helmets, all over. And they had escorts. And so you here had one camera, one lens. And so for me, it was first survival because I was black. Kenyan, ethnic. Right. That meant if I went to Madare or Kibera, they would actually look at me and say, when Kabila Gani, what tribe mm. are you? Yeah. So I'd actually come up with a fake tribe. Didn't, it didn't really sink in at that time, the enormity of what was happening to Kenya? No, it, it wasn't that. I had a few nightmares, but there was so much to look forward to. And then I think a bit after February 28th, when they signed the peace accord, I got married eight days later on March 8th. Mm. But after the wedding, I realized I was messed up. As in, I... I was a spaced out guy. I used to I used to have so much anger. I was very upset because I went back to my normal job as a photographer and they would assign me to go and cover politicians. And I would go to cover a politician, but my whole body was full of rage. And I, the reason why I actually stopped doing what I do and I'm no longer in the streets and it hurts me that I can't go in the streets anymore is that I got a lot of threats. And they were very subtle and they they kept on coming and coming and coming to a, to a level. From the same sources or from different, different people? Different people, uh, from politicians. Tell me a scoop. Tell me something about Boniface Wangi that nobody knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the most silliest, sp stupid thing that I've ever done. Wangi, thank you very much. Man. Sunday Sunday. I really appreciate it. I hope you had as good a time as I yes, did. I did. It was thank really, you. really, really fascinating. Fascinating Sunday. interview, man. Thanks. Thanks.